So to start off this presentation, um, I have a picture of these mice, and I saw a picture similar to this one in ninth grade biology with Dr. Good, and I remember just looking at it and saying, I want that. <laughs> Dr. Good reminds me of that all the time, the entire time during this project. And um, when I heard about senior options, this was the first thing I could think of that I wanted to do. Um, I couldn't imagine doing anything else, and he helped me find the gene gun too. At first I was going to just use a syringe or something else, and instead I built the gene gun itself. And okay, so what is a plasmid? Um, the entire basis of my project is formed around plasmids and vectors. And um, according to the authors at nature.com, a plasmid is a small circular double-stranded DNA um, molecule that um, is distinct from a cell's chromosomal DNA. So, um, plasmids are naturally occurring in bacteria, but vectors, which is what I use essentially, is another form of a plasmid, but it was injected into other plants or uh, other cells besides bacteria, so that's why they're called vectors. Um, the different parts of a plasmid are the target gene, um, the promoter, and the terminating region. So, um, I messed up this image a little bit, but that's all right. Um, so for my promoter, I use the arabinose promoter. Um, I'll talk a little bit more about that later. The target gene is um, the green fluorescent protein gene, and then there's a terminating region right here. All right, so a part of my project was doing research on other glow organisms that exist, and the two that are naturally occurring are Jellyfish and scorpions, if you put them under UV light, they will glow, but um, the others are all genetically modified to glow. And what was amazing about this research was that most of them are benefiting human health, and I thought that was really important. Um, the dog is helping um, understand fatal diseases such as Alzheimer's and Parkinson's disease, which is this picture right here. Um, the sheep is helping produce um, health-boosting milk, and um, the rabbit Unfortunately, it was not created for um, human health, but it was created for entertainment. It was created for art, but it died before it could go on exhibit. Um, the marmosets, which are right here, um, could help understand Parkinson's disease and motor neuron diseases. And cats, um, they were injected with a virus, actually, that um, was like the female form of AIDS, and it could help us humans um, on how to protect H from HIV and AIDS. Um, the fish, um, there are non-commercial and commercial types of glow-in-the-dark fish. Um, the non-commercial ones are um, basically helping us discover female um, that contraceptives have endocrine disruptors, so they can cause um, uterine cancer, testicular cancer, and lower sperm counts. Um, and the mice, um, I actually have two pictures of mice up here, I think. Oh no, I only have one. Um, and that they injected just like the brain stem cells, so only the brains of the mice glow. And they wanted to make a brain bow, was what they called it. Um, and the tobacco, which is right here, um, instead of using jellyfish DNA, they used um, firefly DNA, which was um, somewhat new. Not many people injected plants with firefly DNA, but it glows by itself, not without, without UV light. Um, the worms are right here. And they help with um, they can help us with human swallowing um, uh, and also giving birth and ovulating because um, those are non-controllable rhythmic activities. All right, so um, I was looking at um, the single amino acid sequence of GFP, and this is all the single amino bases, and each of the letters represents one of these. Um, single amino acids, and I wanted to find out which caused um, GFP to glow entirely. And out of all of these, <laughs> only these three, this, this three chain right here is the only reason why GFP glows at all. The rest of it doesn't um, really help much, it's just kind of like a filler, I'm assuming. Um, but I didn't find out any other reasons on why there's so many. Um, all right. So um, what I looked up is um, when the protein chain folds, this segment is deep inside the protein, and there's uh, several chemical reactions that occur, and the glycerine, um, no, the glycine forms a new bond with the serine, and um, it spontaneously dehydrates, and the other is oxygen from the surrounding environment, breaks the tyrosine bonds, and um, it causes fluorescence. So that was pretty awesome. 
Um, so I also wanted to talk about who discovered GFP. Um, this is Osamu Shimomura. He won the Nobel Peace Prize in 2008, and um, he was literally just cutting off the parts that glowed off a jellyfish and squeezing it into a test tube and hoping that he would find out what caused them to glow, which he did. And um, he, he discovered that um, bioluminescence um, releases calcium ions, which um, create blue light, and then that is absorbed by GFP, the gene, and that causes the green glow. Um, and also GFP, he discovered, has 238 amino acid proteins. But um, before I go into my gene gun and everything else that I did myself, um, I wanted to talk about my journal entries. Um, what I realized from all my journal entries was that Dr. Good was such a big part of them. Um, I realized that I wanted to make him proud, and the one that I read that was like most inspiring to me was, um, I realized that the environment I'm in makes me feel less stressed compared to a normal school environment because I can choose to work at home or at school. It feels like I'm taking one class and there's only some homework. Since I also admire Dr. Good as a teacher and as an important figure, I'm always motivated to impress him and do the work for him. And that was um, a common theme over all of my um, journal entries, so I really want to thank him for that before I get into it. <laughs> okay, so this is my gene blaster. Um, I found an article online created by Jay Hansen. Um, he also helped me out throughout this process. Um, so basically we started with just a bunch of tubes, uh, washers, and um, this was my day. It was a 12-hour day <laughs> of just building whatever I had to build. Um, took a lot of selfies, too, um, to make sure that I documented the entire process and the progression. So this was the next picture, and this one, and this one. And then we got to the final product, which is what it looks like today. And that's where it is right in front of you. Um, for the pressure I used, I used 600 to 400 PSI, which you could read on this clock right here. And for time, I used um, 100 milliseconds and 500 milliseconds. Um, the next tedious process um, was cleaning the tungsten powder. Um, this powder was sent to me by Jay Hansen from um, the co-founder of Berkeley Biolabs. And this isn't the exact picture, but thank you so much. Um, we also got um, the BioRad P-Glow kit, which was also very helpful, but I only used some of the materials. I used the plasmid that came with it, the sterile transformation solution, the arabinose, UV pen, um, foam floats, and microcentrifuge tubes. So the first part of the cleaning process was I had to mass out 15 grams of tungsten powder. Then I had to put it in the centrifuge with some ethanol to clean it. And then I had to put it in the sonicator and then I injected, um, or I put in five microliters of um, plasmid, and I did 250 liters of CACL solution, which is transformation solution, which is it, this right here. And that, I would take out five microliters again, and one microliter, and I would put it on these washers, and put parafilm, which is a type of wax paper, and I would let those dry so that I could inject them and put them into this part right here. Um, so these are my results. Um, so this was my first 100% glowing lily. Um, it's actually right on the table right there. Um, I was really excited when I saw this. I started crying in front of all the bio teachers. Um, and this is just like showing that this, um, this was in the dark under UV light and this is under regular light. So this just shows that, um, that the glowing was successful. And Show then, the spot that glows. Oh yeah, it's right here. Wait, like, here, let me turn off the light. So this little part right here, there's probably more that glows right now, but um, I don't want it to uproot it and take it from the soil. And um, I also had one other successful trial, which was um, one of my radishes that's right in here. Um, this radish also glows. It was under trial seven, which was um, 500 milliseconds and um, under 400 pressure. Um, so just to show some examples, um, this is um, just clean tungsten powder after it's been in the freezer. It has to be frozen during um, preparation. And then these also have some plasmid in it, so these are ready to be injected into plants. And um, here are my other trials that of radish seeds. I'll just take out a couple. Um, they're, right now they're in arabinose solution, which is a sugar, which requires them to glow because um, the promoter can only um, code when there's uh, arabinose present, 
so um, it can't glow without <coughs> arabinose, which is why it's super important. And um, these were my, this was my control group. Um, I didn't inject them at all, and none of them glowed, which is pretty good. <laughs> um, and yeah, um, I would just like to thank Dr. Good so much for letting me use his lab, um, his centrifuge, which I wouldn't have had. I used sterile water, I used all of his materials, and I really couldn't have done this without him. So thank you. piece that's so important is that this isn't just injecting some green dye into a plant. In order for this to glow, the DNA had to be uh, what's called transcribed and translated. The plant made the green fluorescent protein from the DNA that just injected into the plant. So she actually has a gene in the plant that's not native to the plant. She has the plasmid, which originally came from a bacterium, which has been injected into the plant and now makes the plant glow green, which proves that the DNA is working. This is the way it's done in um, agriculture. All of the GMO plants that you hear about, many of them were made in exactly this way, by taking a gene blaster. It's normally called a gene gun, but we don't like to use that word. <laughs> so we call it the gene blaster and actually shooting DNA into plants. And that's how all of the corn, um, m much of the corn, they didn't let me know exactly how they do it, but the original ones were done. And the fact that you can just blast DNA and get it to work is, is amazing by itself. So it's, it's a, 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 an amazing accomplishment in the month or two that she had to do it. And um, I'll just show you guys before I'm done. I'll show you how this works. So I'm just going to plug it in. And so right now it's at um, 100 milliseconds. So I'm just going to do one practice shot. Oh, you want me to do this? Yeah, just be careful. There you go. That's enough. Okay. So this is one shot. Um, that's how fast it would go, and at 500 milliseconds, this is how fast it would go. Um, and that's how loud it would sound once I injected all of them. Um, if you want, I can pass around this garlic that I injected last minute, but you can see where it was injected clearly. Um, there's a hole. So <laughs> here we go. You need to pass that around. So Jessica, so in your slide where the where the glowing part is, that's where the injection, that was like the site yes, of the injection? Yes, um, that's exactly where I injected it. Um, I wasn't prepared to see um, glow in this plant in particular, only because it's so big and it's not mitosing as fast as the radish seeds would. But um, yeah, this glow spot was um, the only part that glowed besides the roots, because the roots are naturally white, so they would glow under UV light anyway. And I missed the beginning. Where where did you derive the DNA that you then injected into the plant? Um, it came from the BioRad kit. Um, okay. Go backwards and show me. Oh. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's in this kit right here. Okay. Um, it came um, in the kit, which was um, really helpful. Um, it's one of the reasons why we ordered the kit because it was the only easy way to get the DNA to you inject them. Here's some and so those cells will continue to multiply in the plant, and so more there will be more cells in the plant that have that um, that DNA, and it'll glow more. Yeah, essentially, yes. Um, right now, they're probably not glowing because there's no arabinose present in the soil, mm -hmm. so they probably won't glow as much, and um, the cells will continue to spread throughout the plant. So the plasmid it replicates independently of the post DNA. So as long as the cells are replicating, the plasma will replicate and form more plasmids as well. Yeah, you can ask that. Yeah. And what would happen if you injected a human? Um, well, we, that was one of the questions that I asked Dr. Hill when I was in ninth grade. Um, I really wanted to inject myself, which was a <laughs> silly idea, but um, right now you can't. It would probably be very painful if I used this gun right here, and if, it would probably be very messy. Um, <laughs> once we can alter the human genome, though, um, they're probably going to think of a way that we probably could glow in the dark, but I don't know if it would be beneficial, but they could. Thank you. Oh. Anything else? Why does it, why does, uh, like, why did, why do you need the gun? Like, why, why not just, like, a, a syringe? Like, why does it have to be high, 
air pressure, why is it different? Um, the syringe. How big are the particles? Oh, the particles are very, very small. Um, they're 10 microns. The tungsten powder is 10 microns itself, so that's fairly, fairly small. Um, and also, if you just used a syringe, um, there's no guarantee that it would go directly into the cells, but this guarantees that it'll go in a fast pressure and a high pressure into the cells. So. Any other questions?